In-season training is one of the most important training blocks that an athlete is gonna have throughout the year. So I wanna share with you the five must-have things in your training program during in-season so that you continue to see progress, stay healthy for the games, as well as perform at your best. If you don't know me, my name is Nick Lavin. I'm a certified strength and conditioning coach and owner of the Peak Performance Program, a rugby athlete myself, and worked with hundreds of athletes overall. So let's get into the first thing that is often neglected in season. The first thing is gonna be weekly max velocity sprints, top speed sprints. You need to have these in your training block during in season. You may think, well, I run a lot at practice or we do a lot of conditioning, which is great to a degree, but you're never hitting the top speeds that you would if you were completely fresh and completely ready to go. You're never hitting those speeds in practice and very, very rarely in games. Speed is something that can start to decrease in as little, and top speed is something that decreases in as little as a week's time. Not only will having weekly sprint sessions where you're doing maybe fly 10s, fly 20s, low volume work so you get that exposure um, to keep your speed, but you're also keeping your hamstrings and legs ready for that exposure when it's needed so it's not hey, we've been running, 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 but now I'm calling upon my muscles right now to run at a speed I've never ran before in the past, you know, four, five, six weeks to be able to handle that load. And this is typically why I see a lot of hamstring is injuries um, and issues come up during in season is there's the total fatigue and load that's happening on the body without the exposure to keep that work and load tolerance high with it. So make sure you're doing some speed sprints. What I did and what our athletes do, very simple, just run four or five fly tens one time a week. Could be before a lift, a couple of days before a game. It doesn't matter. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes of time to make sure that you're keeping your hamstrings safe and body safe while getting that exposure, but also keeping your top speed high. Because as you know, speed kills. The next thing, and this is one that I think training philosophies might be a little bit different. My thought process as a strength and conditioning coach is I want our athletes to be the most powerful and most explosive during in season. I'm not someone who wants them to go into this maintenance mode and just try to hold on for dear life as the weeks go on, weeks go on, weeks go on, and you get weaker and less powerful throughout it. I don't think that works very well. I think you need to continue to have exposure to very highly explosive movements and very high power output movements to keep that high. So doing plyometric and power-based training in season. And we're gonna cover and talk about how you do this in a little bit, but you need to have that exposure, whether it's trap bar jumps or hang power cleans or box jumps or broad jumps or resistance sprints, which is a kind of combo between power and speed training. Keeping your power output high is going to keep you explosive in the games. Again, we'll get into volume management in a little bit. The next thing, again, I, I freaking hate the maintenance mode type of stuff. You don't know how many athletes I've talked to where it's like, oh, I feel really good going into season. I'm strong, powerful, explosive. And then you talk to them again, you know, maybe towards the end of season, they're like, man, I just feel weak. Like, I just, I don't feel strong anymore. And it's because they completely shift their style of training and they just start to do you know, a little bit lighter reps or a little bit lighter weights and get into the, the, get in the workouts, get out of them. The thing that you need to do is have strength training sets touching at least 85% of your one rep max or higher. So that way you can give your body that strength stimulus it needs in order to stay strong throughout the season, which is gonna lead me right into the next one, which is load management and rest. Really, when it comes to in-season training, your load management and having adequate rest to combat just the total amount of fatigue that's happening on your body from training, from practices, from games, is going to be the biggest thing to keep you healthy and safe. So one way we make sure, how do we get sprints, plyo, strength training, 
and not do it in a way that overloads the system and puts, it as, put us, puts us at an increased risk for injury is very simple. We just reduce the amount of load of that heavy strength stimulus. So one thing that we do with our, you know, back squats, front squats, deadlifts, well, probably not deadlifts, but you know, the heavy sort of strength training stimulus that we're looking for, the bench press and stuff like that is we'll have our athletes do, you know, a warm up set. They'll do a set around 70, 75%. And then we take them into a top set where, hey, maybe now we're working at 85%, 90%, and they're hitting that top set, super low volume, maybe only two reps, three reps. So enough to get that strength stimulus and tell our body, hey, we still need to stay strong, but not enough to cause any real muscular damage and to fatigue them overall. So we get the stimulus and we get the benefit of staying strong, but we don't get the overarching fatigue that happens with three, four, five, six, seven sets at the typical kind of strength training range. Okay, so think high intensity, but lowering the volume way, way down. It's the same thing with our plyometrics. Maybe in off season, we're doing three, four, five sets of three to four, but in season, I may have them do one set or two sets of two to three jumps, and that's it. Get them warm, be powerful, be explosive, and then cut it out. And the last thing to keep that you really need to be doing is mobility training, okay? So often this mobility training also serves as a way to load to manage load a little bit, to increase joint range of motion, increase some tendon health. Um, and in sports, sometimes you put get put in awkward positions, okay? And you need to be able to be strong in those pos in those deep ranges of motion, and so you can be more durable throughout the entire season to keep yourself from getting injured. So these are my five must-haves that you need to have in season. And if you're a rugby athlete who's looking for a full year's worth of training from off season to in season and what you do in between, make sure to check out some of the links below and you check out the Rugby Peak Performance Program and I'll see you in the next video.